For this tutorial, we're going to look at galleries, in particular gallery blocks, which are content blocks built into Squarespace. And we can either have full width galleries, as shown in this example via squareforge.net. Head over there and you can steal any one of these layouts. We've got the templates here going anything up from two images to three, four, five, six. We can also change the aspect ratio from landscape, portrait, or square. And here's an example here of a portrait grid gallery with content offset to the left. And we're going to create something like that today. Another alternative example where we have an offset grid gallery. And then when we click on any of the photos, it will open them up in a light box. Of course, these are just small thumbnail images uploaded to the platform. So they would be full screen images. And we're going to use some stock photos as our example. So let's jump over to our playground page and have a look at this example here. First of all, I'm going to duplicate this section that was created for a previous tutorial. And we're going to use some of this content. So I'm going to delete these two items by click, drag, and select in all of these. And I'm going to select that single image and delete that. Then I'm going to select these content blocks here and move them over to the left, creating some space for a gallery offset to the right. I can now add our gallery block. We can see it's fourth in the list here. And we've got some placeholder images already in place. I'm a little tired of these now because I've been using Squarespace for so long. But they do the job. I'm also going to reduce the height of that content block so I can make the section more compact. Already, we can start seeing it take shape. What I'm going to do now is change the color of this background. And I'm going to make it the darkest color just so we can differentiate it from the section above. Before we start playing around with the gallery, let's tweak the settings for that entire section. And I'm going to remove the fill screen option. That makes it compact and fit from the top and the bottom of that section. The one thing we've got here, though, is that it's always adding an extra row at the bottom. So to balance it out, I'm just going to do the same from the top. And now we have a more balanced view. I can select this content and bring it down manually. Now that we've got rid of the default spacing, top and bottom, we need to adjust that accordingly as well. And I might adjust this so we have eight photos instead of 12. Now with the gallery selected, I can click on the pencil icon. And from here, go to design and choose six items per row, and that will drop it down to two rows of six. I can also upload my images into this section here or add images from our stock library via the search images option. Let's drop a couple of images in place. Notice that we can't select multiple photos, so we have to select one at a time. Once I've selected a photo, we can click add. And then whilst that one's been added, we can go and do the same for the second photo. I'm going to add in four. Alternatively, we can choose photos from Unsplash, Stock Photo Library. But as these are already in my selected library, I can add these in. Let's add our fourth as well. What I'm going to choose to do now is go with one row of four. So we're going to drop it down to four per row. And then we can choose to adjust the padding around the images as we see fit. I'm going to leave it at 20 because it fits quite nicely above and below. And now I need to just remove the extra spacing at the bottom of the gallery block to make the layout more compact. What I can do here is we can count the number of grid blocks above the content area. So there's three and then drop it to three at the bottom. This is always fun because I always find with the touchpad on my MacBook, it's always a little bit fiddly with this setting. So what I can do instead is move our button further down, bring the bottom up to that, and then adjust that into position. We shouldn't have to do it. There's a little bug in the system, but that's just one way of stopping it from constantly moving up and down. There we go, an interesting grid block structure. And what we can do now is adjust it to the full width. So we've got the, the content block here in the middle. It doesn't go to the edge of the screen, but what we can do is offset content, break it outside the content block, and so it goes right the way to the edge of the screen. I wouldn't want to do it on this end with the text because we're going to end up with that looking very messy 
going right the way towards the left hand side of the screen. So I'm going to leave that to the natural size and this gallery going right the way to the edge. And once we've created that gallery, we can switch the design up to a slideshow with one large image, potentially with thumbnails below. We can go for carousel option, or we can leave it at our grid or finally stacked option, which wouldn't work as well in this particular example because of how we've laid out the content. So we're going to go back to grid. And finally, we're going to test this on mobile view. You can now choose to adjust the text content accordingly. Or of course, I could bring the gallery to sit at the top of the page and move the text block below. Just got to select those items. Reshuffle things around. And there we have it. The great thing about how this works with Squarespace is that even though we've got the images first on mobile, we haven't moved or touched anything on desktop view. So we still keep that specific look and feel for desktop, which then automatically adjusts at a breakpoint for mobile. Hope you found this tutorial helpful. There's loads more coming your way. We'll be looking at these content blocks in Squarespace and how we can create bespoke looking layouts. Check back soon. Cheers. If you want to say in the future direction of the content that I'll be creating at Pixel Haze Academy and to get involved in our community, all you need to do is leave me your email address. We're looking to create our first community in the coming weeks and I'm going to be throwing everything I've got at it. That includes our Moonshot Transformation Program, our entire library of online courses, the opportunity to engage with me in regular group sessions. There's more information in the description and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can develop this. Thanks again and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.